Number nine, most people have advent calendars with little chocolates in them, or you pay more than $800 for Chanel's version. It's all about high-end luxury. Includes a bottle of Chanel Number no. 5 and some lipsticks, oh, but yeah. people on TikTok have been revealing some of the clunkers. One box has stickers. Another is an empty dust bag that would be used to keep something in, like jewelry. Right. Two boxes have jewelry that look like tin. Another is a paperweight. And some eagle-eyed Chanel lovers are chiming in. They claim that these so-called fancy surprises are leftovers from past there you BWP go. GWPs, gifts Robin. with purchase. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know there was a short oh, yeah. slang for that. Yep. They're calling the advent calendar by Chanel a big bust. Yeah. 800 bucks. Yeah. Mm. Wow. All right, number uh, number eight. We'll make this uh, the last word on the bad smell that can come from the front loading washing machine. Uh, it's mildew. In Italian, we call it mufad. We do? We do. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I guess, I think I, I guess who wrote this one? <laughs> the smell is coming from the uh, rubber gasket at the front yeah. of the washer. That's where the mildew is growing. Washing machine scientists say you need to clean out the drum with a special detergent or a mix of white vinegar and baking soda. Otherwise, you'll risk having that stench. Ugh. You know where this doesn't happen? On a regular old washing machine you know, that top. I've had for 12 years where you throw it right in the top yep. and there's uh, no yeah. rubber gasket. Right. Yeah. I don't get it. It's one of the longest relationships you've ever it had. It is one of the longest relationships. You know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. And I, now that I think about it, you're absolutely we right. Lost <laughs> Look at 12 years. And it's still going strong. Yeah. I don't what get kind it. is it? Do you can give a shout out. It's okay. Boy, I Let don't even know. know. Is it I'm a not a big, Might be. An LG? I don't know. I don't know. It's old enough that it was there when I moved into this house. I didn't even buy it. Yeah. So the previous owner You've had this one. It. God bless. I mean, 12 so years of pressing. With all these lovely front-loading washing machines, yeah. no one has fixed that problem yet? Maybe they have. No, they haven't because ours stinks too. If we, <sighs> you got to leave it open. That's the key. But it looks fancy. you got to dry it out oh, yeah. when you're done fancy. and you leave it open a crack. I don't think it really looks that fancy either. It just looks like it has a door to the front. Just saying. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah, number seven, the mother of 10-year-old Pixie Curtis says her daughter will likely be ready to retire at the age of 15. Yes, 15. That's because her mom launched Pixie's Bows back when the girl was just a toddler. A pretty successful venture, but what really put them over the top was a lunch back in May of Pixie's Fidgets. And the mother-daughter created a line of those fidgets and pop toys. They sold out in two days. They cleared a few hundred grand wow. in the first few months. Wow. Now they're put everything under the umbrella of Pixie's Picks, which sells other kids' toys, clothes, and accessories. It's all on track to bring in, get this, 21 million in the wow. next decade, right? Meanwhile, I'm investing in food and shelter. Meanwhile, Pixie's mother says, quote, I'm going to get her some new clothes, and I also want to get her some real hair, because she desperately needs hair extensions, what? Pixie right. told the magazine. What? Okay. Why can't I come up with an idea? I, it's just nice. a piece of crap. I a know. Bunch of I know. Kids mm -hmm. love. My daughter loves those little things. I know. And you just, that's all yeah. it is. You just pop these little rubber things, and that's it. We are one kids good one good idea from that's getting it. out of yeah. here. We've been saying that for years, <laughs> and I don't know what it is, but we, it still hasn't come to any of us. No. Right. Yeah, well. Number six, looking to have a good time? Head to the land down under. Australia has been voted drunkest country in the world, oh. according to a recent survey from booze scientists. <laughs> <laughs> as long as some scientists, I would like to spend some time booze with. Booze scientists, yeah. okay. Australians got drunk at least 27 times a year. The national average is wow. 15 times a year. On average, Aussies say they drink two nights a week. 15 is our average? Is that for the Aussies is 15? I think the Aussies are. Yeah, I think average. But Sitting next to Robin, it's rubbing off on me. I'm asking <laughs> you questions before you're even done with the story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you're thrown And then off. he's yeah. thrown and he can't finish the script. Well, they're only uh, getting really drunk, quote, twice a month, according to some. Australian uh, men are reportedly to be the heaviest drinkers. He's dating an Australian and then doesn't drink at all. So, ah, yeah. interesting. The outliers. Yeah, I guess so. All right, number five, the Carolina squat is now illegal on the roads of uh, North Carolina. Oh, no, it's a different. The squat is a modification to vehicles that raises their front while keeping their rear end low to the ground. They're not safe, so the state is making them illegal for the road. Hmm. But the guys who love having their trucks like this, 
uh, are asking for a compromise. One solution is to modify the vehicles again by putting something like an airbag in the rear so that if they uh, can lower it in traffic and if they go to a truck show they can still raise it up again. Huh. Uh, we will let you know what happens, but riding with it raised is, is, is not um, safe. Just yeah. so you can run over pedestrians more easily? I don't know. I don't know. Huh. It All looks right. cool, I guess. All right. Uh, well, number four, for the gamer in your life, Tetris waffles. Yes, you heard it here first. The Tetris waffle maker <laughs> turns your waffles into individual Tetris blocks. The grids on the heating plates are uneven, so they're laid out in a way that makes an uneven waffle. Once it's done, take the whole thing apart, snap off the blocks, pull them apart. Now, even if you don't like Tetris, this waffle maker might still work for you because it makes tiny, bite-sized pieces uh, for the person on the go. Mm. Lovely. Mm. Mom always said, Video games never going to make your life any good. She did not play Tetris, no. and mm -hmm. Tetris really helped with yeah, moving skills. Yeah, it still holds up. Sure. Great game. Yeah. All right, number three, everywhere you turn, people are playing pickleball. Yeah, they are. My mother-in-law yeah. just started playing this. Really? Yeah. yeah, she's playing it every week. Well, it's actually the fastest growing sport in America right now. The game itself is a combination of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. It was invented in the mid-60s by three dads who were looking for new ways to entertain their kids. They named it after a dog named Pickles. And here's how it works. You, you just need some paddles and a plastic wiffle ball. You can play inside, outside, singles or doubles. Each match is played to 11 points. Yeah. But good luck finding a court since it's so popular. People of all ages are playing and spots can be hard to find. Yeah. So is it on like a... It's like Can a mini you, tennis court it's, almost. Oh, it's okay. tennis for less athletic people. Well, I might it's, be on board really for that, is. but it's... That could, could be right up <laughs> Is that the same it's, as paddle? It's a small court. You don't have to yeah, run that not much. As much. Three running. steps, and you're to the other side and of the court. And I got court. the weak ankles. I can't cut and Right. Not cut like you, not like you right. used to be able to no, cut. No, not like and the And pickleball is the same as paddle, right? When people say, I'm going to go play paddle, isn't that the same thing? Same sport? I don't know, Dan. No, it's different. Oh, it's different. Okay. Paddle no. is on a raised court oh. in a cage, okay. essentially, according to Terry yeah. Barthel. And okay. only one person exits that cage. <laughs> <laughs> beat each other with right. the paddles. That's why yeah, it's, it's violent. Huh. Right. All right. Number two. Might have seen this photo out there, and we don't really have anything to add. We just wanted to show it to you. Who is this? It's Mickey Rourke and oh, Friend, yeah. and a friend from about four years back. Uh, oh, the this? friend there is Giuseppe Franco, and he owns a salon in Beverly Hills. You know what you're all thinking, oh, right? Yeah. Zoolander, Zoolander for sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking what a natural beauty Mickey Rourke is. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It's this blue steel right there. So this was four years ago, though? Yeah. Is that what you said? Right. We just wanted to put it out there. and mm. It's a good look. He's got... It is like, it's like Ben Stiller and Owen mm -hmm. Wilson. Yeah. Like it was time, uh, yeah. fast forward. All right, number one already. This is a scene from a 1986 made-for-TV Christmas movie called Babes in Toyland. Let's see if you recognize anyone. The best town in Ohio, 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 Look familiar? I can't even Taking see. Taking a look. It's really good. Driver, yes. Driver. Not the best quality. Okay, there's the driver. Who do you think that is? Can't see. Can't see. It's really dark, isn't it? I give up. It's I Keanu up. Reeves. No. Oh, the back, there we go. And in now the back I see seat, it. Can you see who's in the back seat? Drew Barrymore. Okay. Oh my. This this aired on uh, NBC. The music and lyrics are by Leslie Brickus, the same guy who wrote the songs for Willy Wonka. Wow, we. Huh? There she is. Wow. Hey, that's a long. We learned a lot this morning. We sure did. Well, that's the nine at nine. Yeah. And we are looking at it.